Welcome back, my friends, to the EdTech Christmas Countdown, 12 Days of Learning. Um, I will be combining the 11th day on December 4th and the 10th day on December 14th together because I will be talking about Google Lit Trips, Google Earth, uh, My Maps, Google Tour Builder. Um, so a few things, they, they all kind of go hand in hand. They sort of do the same things. Um, I know some of you who have been here and have known me for a while are like, oh my God, she's talked about this. But uh, these are still some of my favorite uh, applications, not only for us to create things, but for students to create things. Um, there are a few caveats, so I will go over those, but uh, I will try to do this as fast as I can because there are a few. So Google Lit Trips, for those of you who uh, may not have ever heard of them, basically, um, by the way, just because it says Google doesn't mean Google created these. This is like some third party, you know, nonprofit company or group that have actually created these. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's lots of teachers, but this is where they house them. So, um, Google Lit Trips are basically combining Google Earth and their tour capabilities with literature. Um, it could be primary grade books that, that teachers have chosen to create Lit Trips to um, make interactive. But um, basically, they create a Google Earth tour that takes them on an interactive tour of places that are, are occurring in the story. So for example, and by the way, you can become a member on here, and then you just come to this little um, Google Lit Trip store, you create, you sign in, and then you find the book that you want, they download it for you, or they email it to you, you download it, comes to your downloads, and then you open it right up in Google Earth. Um, so here's one of the caveats. Google Earth is not a web browser application. So it is a native application and you do have to download it. I believe though, um, when they imaged the computers, I did ask for that to be downloaded, all the plugins. So you should have it on your teacher computers and the student computers. Um, but I say maybe, because you never know. So it opens up here in your temporary places. And here are all the stops that this teacher created to go along with that story. So here you can press play. You'll see the little um, task bar, toolbar that pops up here. And it will go ahead and take you to each of those stops, or take the students to each of those stops. This would be cool for students to create as well in the upper grades. Um, it's a really neat tool. tool. Tool, excuse me. And then each stop they can pause it, they can click. There's an, uh, there could be a video, an image, usually a comprehension type question, or maybe some links to other places. You can click over here at the stops as well, um, but obviously won't take you there on the map. There's a video, so really, really cool. I still love Google Earth, um, and I think you can do a lot with it, not just Google it trips, but it can be used all across the board um, in lots of subject areas. So. There's that one, and then Google Tour Builder. Um, we've used in the past here. Um, we've tried it in first grade. We've used it in fourth grade, and eighth graders created their own tours a few years ago, which were really cool. Um, this is one that was created by a social studies teacher. And here's one of the caveats with Tour Builder. Again, uh, Tour Builder, oh, did I mention Google, Google Earth cannot be used on Chromebooks, and nor can Google Tour Builder. So that's sort of the bummer. Um, they just don't support those plugins. Uh, so you would have to use these on MacBooks. And Chrome decided for the Chrome browser not to support web plugins anymore. So you do have to use like Safari or Firefox to open this up. And you'll notice this right here is a 2D model. And then if you come over to Safari, let me go back a few pages, you'll see it will support the 3D plugin, the 3D model. So as you go through this tour, the kids are learning about um, the American Revolution and it brings them to different slides and information. It's basically a digital storytelling tool. tool. So you can add um, video clips in here, you can add lots of images, um, all sorts of stuff. What's cool about this is you can search right within here as well, so it helps with a lot of copyright stuff. But super cool digital storytelling tour tool, again, can used 
be used across the board for lots of different subject areas, different grades, um, but the kids really, really enjoyed that one. Uh, my maps is sort of the workaround now. My maps um, has come, Google Maps has come a long way. They created this My Maps that is very similar to Google Earth. You can create place markers um, and, and tours that will take people on, on tours, and you can add different layers. You can add the web links, the videos, the mu music files, um, you name it, it can be added to each of those place markers. So very cool. Um, and this one does work on Chromebooks. So this is kind of the workaround for if you can't get your hands on a MacBook, then um, then maybe play around with My Maps. My Maps doesn't have as many already created um, tours because it's, I don't want to say it's fairly new. I mean, all of these have been around a long time. Um, but there are still quite a few tours that were created um, in the past that are still quite useful. So I added a few links here for social studies. These are more social studies tours. Um, there's quite a few on like the Civil War and different battlefields and things like that. There are some math ones as well. I've seen Google Earth be used in math quite a bit um, for destinations and measurement and, and different things like that. So enjoy if you're interested or think this might be useful in your classroom. Uh, let me know and we can set up some time to plan together and, and uh, make it successful. So enjoy. Thanks a bunch. I'll be back with number nine, the ninth day of learning shortly. Thanks. Bye.